flower shop. The man stole a $200 teddy bear display outside the shop near 35th Avenue in Bethany Home. A witness says the man pulled up in a van, got out, and grabbed the large stuffed animal. The witness did provide police with a license plate number. No one was hurt. New proof that valley crooks are going to great lengths for one precious metal. One Phoenix school has been targeted multiple times by copper thieves, and now that school is paying a hefty price. New at 5, Rich Dubeck has more on what's become a criminal gold mine. Rich? Mark, just a couple of years ago, the price of copper was only about 80 cents a pound. It is now about $3 a pound, and that, police say, is the problem. Home builders have been hit hard. So have plumbers and electrical supply companies, and now you can add Valley Schools to the list. Yeah. Last weekend, the men found the electrical box at the back of Squaw Peak Elementary School. It appears that they pulled the wires out from right here. Police believe they used a cable and a truck to yank out roughly a thousand feet of copper wire. Well, when they pull the wire, what they're doing is basically cutting off our electricity. Four times thieves have hit Creighton District schools at a cost of nearly $50,000. The school's forced to move students to other classrooms. Police say the thieves will yank transformers right off telephone poles. According to SRP, they're averaging seven incidents a month at a cost of more than $400,000. Recently, we had an incident in the West Valley where copper thieves actually cut down more than 20 energized power poles. The people who steal copper can sell it in scrap yards, and a lot of times the things that they steal aren't specifically marked, so it's hard to track where those things came from. At $3 a pound, it's a supply and demand problem. Police say right now their only hope is that residents report suspicious activity, and police can catch them in the act. In Phoenix, Rich Dubeck, 12 News. Now, as far as the scrap yards, they are required to document metal transactions, but tomorrow, police, construction companies, and utilities will all meet to discuss new ways to try to get a handle on this problem. Two people are recovering after flames engulf a mobile home in Mesa this afternoon. The view from Sky 12's Power Vision shows exten extensive damage to that home, which is near Val Vista and Broadway. Both victims were able to get out of the home, but they did suffer cuts and burns. The home, though, is considered a total loss. Well, wicked weather is being blamed for at least a dozen deaths along the East Coast. Weather forecasters have issued blizzard warnings for parts of New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and Maine. The region could get up to two feet of snow. Utility workers say close to 300,000 homes and businesses have lost power. One community really getting hit is Burlington, Vermont. People there could be blanketed by two feet of snow before the system finally moves off. State police have put more than three dozen troops on highways to help with stranded motorists. The storm also forced the cancellation of most flights in and out of Burlington International Airport. The storm is causing numerous flight delays and cancellations from coast to coast, the impact even being felt here at Sky Harbor. Travelers are dealing with some late arrivals and departures to destinations like Chicago O'Hare because of the weather. And we've set up a link on our website at 12news.azcentral.com so you can check flight status before leaving home. Well, many kids in northern Arizona were pleasantly surprised this morning when they awoke to a snow day. A storm pushed through Flagstaff overnight, and it left dangerous driving conditions on many of the roadways. Brandon Klein joins us from Flag, where crews have been busy throughout the day. Brandon? Yeah, Lynn Sue, kids had a pretty easy day, but adults were busy with accidents and road closures. This is Highway 89A, one of the main roads to Sedona. Now, it has been reopened, but conditions are so bad, officials say it could close again for weeks at a time. Flagstaff drivers not quite ready for the ice and snow that was waiting for them on the roads this morning. Even in my truck, I sometimes slide around a bit. The slick roads were enough for Flagstaff schools to cancel classes for the first time this year, and police were busy responding to dozens of accidents and slide-offs. I was up and out at 5 this morning, and you just take it slow. It wasn't too bad. They were a little slick at first, and then when the snow came in heavier, they're a little bit harder, but if you drive slow and take it easy, it's not a problem. You can turn around right in there and head back. Officials are still dealing with erosion problems following last summer's Brins fire. Highway 89A into Oak Creek Canyon was closed down for the day, fearing drivers may lose control on the narrow winding road. Tight curves and things of that nature uh, can cause a lot of problems uh, with ice on the roadway. This is a rental. I'm here now from Phoenix, and I hope it gets me back to Phoenix. DPS says speed is to blame for most of the accidents, saying drivers aren't slowing down enough for winter conditions. I slowed down from 80 to 75. I thought I ought to follow the speed limit. 
Now, most roads are clear of snow at this point, but some have a thin layer of ice and going 75 miles an hour certainly is not going to be very safe, so slow down. Live in Flagstaff, Brandon Klein, 12 News. All right, Brandon, you be careful too. And here's some good news.